and Joe Lacob thinks that this roster can win a championship. Now, I don't want to go too knee-deep into this today because I do want to break down the Warriors at some point later this week. Do you? Because I do not. I, I do. I I'm just going to say, I do not think the Warriors this year can win a championship. I'm going to say that on the front end. And call me wrong. If they do and they prove me wrong, I will do what Mark Willard wants to do. Walk around with egg on his face for a whole week. Do you, FP, believe that this Warrior roster right now can win a championship? No. But I, I, I think there's going to be some good things that come from this season. And there's a number of good things that have already happened during this season, whether it's the development of Kaminga, whether it's Brandon Pajemski, yep. like becoming uh, maybe an all-star next year. Like th I had no idea who this kid was. Uh, like he's a baseball player that started playing basketball late in life, and all of a sudden he's turned into my favorite warrior, besides the obvious. But, but if, if, Joe, what's the biggest storyline for you for the Warriors, and let me give you some choices Yes, in the first half of the season. Is it Draymond getting suspended again? Is it Clay kind of becoming an older player all of a sudden? Is it Pajemski out of nowhere? Is it the development of Kaminga? Is it Steve Kerr's handling of the rotate? Mm -hmm. Like, what is your, if you had to rank, what is your number one story for the Warriors in the first, I guess, air quote, first yeah. half of the season? So you didn't put this on there, but I think it's like two of them tied together. Self-awareness. I think it's the most underrated attribute in life yeah. and in sports. The self-awareness of Curry to realize Kaminga's the fountain of youth. The self-awareness of Draymond to realize, like, yeah, if we can get this Kaminga guy rolling, he does some things on the floor that none of us can do. The self-awareness for Clay to realize, I need to go to the bench, and even though I'll still be able to get up my shots, it's just better for the overall good. And the self-awareness of Jonathan Kaminga to realize, like, if I do the small things, I know I can do some of the bigger things in terms of scoring and falling into place. And I think the self-awareness of Steve Kerr to run more stuff like high pick and rolls going downhill to accentuate what Jonathan Kaminga does. It's Kaminga, but it's the self-awareness of everyone to realize he's not coming for your things. He's coming to help you get more things. Does that make sense? It makes great sense. Yeah, so self-awareness is your number one. It, Clay, I, I've been fighting this uphill battle, and it's not Clay is still a useful player. I, no one is saying he can't play. There's this like narrative now in sports. You're either great or horrific. It's like, you know how many exit ramps there are in between those two destinations? Clay is a useful player in the right situations, and him having the self-awareness to know, yeah, I'm probably not a number one option anymore. Some of those shots that I used to take flippantly, you know, I, I can't take those same kind of shots. Some of those defensive assignments that I used to take, I might not be able to take those on the, anymore. Some of the minutes I was allocated, I might not be... I might be hitting the law of depreciating returns if I play more than 30 minutes a game, right? I think those things and him taking a small backseat will make him a more efficient player and allow Kaminga and some of these other guys like Pajemski to get rolling. Like, FP, every team in every sport is looking for young, controllable players on team-friendly deals who can give the fountain of youth to some of their veterans making top dollar. Like, name a team in sports that's not trying to find a Brock Purdy contract, a Jonathan Kaminga contract, right? Like, aren't we all? Aren't we all looking for the next Corbin Carroll contract for an Arizona Diamondbacks team, right? Yeah. So, like, I think that the young players, Pajemski I would throw into that mix, and Jonathan Kaminga getting the runway and developing, improving, and earning, and continuing to play well, that's the biggest thing for me. I don't think it can be overstated how awesome it is that Clay's buying into this. Do you know how hard it is to be a Hall of Fame type player and have the career and the resume that he has to say, okay, I'm going to the bench? And this isn't just like eyewash. This isn't just like yeah. when you look at the quotes, I just want to take it upon myself to prove to coach that I was going to respond like a champ, and I am, that, that I am. Uh, I learned some things about myself that I'm going to carry with myself throughout the whole season. Like he's saying things that are authentic. We got we were talking about that earlier. Yeah, just to play for your teammates, play for the fun of the game, play for the dubs, not the name on the back of the jersey. That's when I'm at my best. When winning is the only thing that matters, and that resonates so so hugely with me because whenever I thought about getting my hits and getting my stats when I was up for arbitration, yeah, I was horrible. And when you just like buy into the concept of let's win and the numbers take care of themselves, let's all check our egos at the door. Even though when you win four championships <laughs> and you're making forty mil a year, yeah. there's got to be a lot of egos there. But we all there have has ego. To be. But but for but a guy, right. I, I can't even relate because I was yeah. I, to a guy with that stature to embrace that 
and it's not eyewash. And he's not saying things like, well, you know, Coach Kerr said this, and I'll just see how it goes. Like, it looks like he's really wrapping his head around the fact that maybe he's not the player that he used to be, and he can still contribute mightily. And when a Hall of Fame-type player slides back to the rest of the pack, that he's still better than most players. Yes. When you're at this level, and this isn't great radio because I'm going to demonstrate with my hand, and you slide back to this level, but the rest of the league is at just a little bit below that level, you're still better. Clay Thompson's still better than 80% of the players out there. And so if he's going to contribute in a different way, but ra- Joe, wrapping your head around that role and embracing that role tells me really all you need to know about the man and not the player. And I think a lot of times we get caught up in the fantasy uh, league stats and, and we, we, we see what he's scoring. Yeah. But but it's more about the person to me and the man that he is and he's showing that, hey, screw it. If I'm here and this is what makes a team better and I'm playing to win yeah. games, he just went out to play to win the other night. What did he do? He threw in 35. He just went to play to win. He started playing the game again for the passion, the love of the game. Not The ego's not in the way of I have to be a starter. The ego's not in the way of I have to score this many points for us to win. I'm just going to go out there and do whatever it takes to help my team win. I'm going to find a way to beat you on a nightly basis, and I want to be a part of a winner again. And if the, being a part of a winner means me taking a backseat to a kid who's balling out right now and doing everything right, and it makes our team better, this, this is all great talk. But to do that from his status and to the pride and the ego to come off the bench. Nobody likes to come off the bench. No one. I don't care what sport it is. I totally agree. I never could wrap my head around it. I hated every minute of it. I wanted to be out there playing. And to be a bench player sucked. It did. But at least you're there. Yes. But then once you wrap your head around it and you say, okay, this is my role and I'm going to embrace it and I'll be the best damn bench player I can be. I'm a bench player at 95-7 right now. I'm going to try to be the best damn bench player I can be. Do I like it? No. Do I like working part-time? No. Do I want a full-time job somewhere? Do I want to be an everyday player? Yeah. But you wrap your head around mm. that, you embrace it, and you say, okay, giddy up, baby. And that's what he did. Yeah. And that makes me like him even more. And I was starting to worry about him with the quotes and the woe is me stuff. Yeah. And, the, and, it, and, it, and it seemed like he was really... Like basketball started to become a job and it looks heavy and he never looked happy in a press conference and he looked like this is too big for me right now. And hey, there there's nothing harder to watch greatness decline. Well, can can I and I don't mean to interrupt you, but like the clay thing is fascinating to me. I don't know clay. I, I don't know him. I don't know him at all. Um, but he strikes me as we talk about all these athletes who don't care, Clay strikes me as someone who really dramatically cares about his status in in the game and basketball means to him more than anything in my life means to me outside of my family you know what i'm saying yeah and uh there's something that's refreshing about that but i also think that that um like his whole worth as a human being is am i playing good am i still one of the best players on the planet i'm not i don't want to like say that that's the only thing he cares about cuz i don't know he might have a girlfriend or family or something that he cares about that we don't know about but it sure strikes me that like his status as a basketball player and him playing the game of basketball means everything to him and on one level i super appreciate it on the other level it's like that can be unhealthy when you're struggling right and i i'm just curious like in the mind of the athlete how difficult is it to balance that out when you're so maniacally obsessed about being great? You can never, ever, 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 ever associate your self worth with your performance, and if you do that, you're in deep trouble. But don't you think like I'm a was? better person if I hit 300? No, I know. I'm a but horrible don't... person if I hit 200. Or, but that's that's where. Am I wrong? No, but that's where you get into that trap, and and if you start evaluating your self worth based on your performance, exactly. it's it's oh man, you're more than a athlete yes you're 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 a son you're a father you're um a, a good partner yeah and so that that's a difficult thing to address what i would say about clay is he doesn't look like he's having fun playing basketball and that but that's it's where, body language yeah and, and when when you do it for a living i feel like i'm a professional body language reader like really? i do because yeah if, if i can see you on the mound you're looking at me yeah. and you're fake tough i know if you're fake confident i know if you're if you're gripping and you're nervous and you, I just there's a way we go about it when we're looking for any sort of edge against our opponent. And in the edge I used to find with body language, I could tell if a guy walked into the batter's box and he was feeling great about himself. I can tell by watching Clay on the court if he's feeling great about himself or if he's not. He's got the droopy shoulders. Yes, he's got the, yes. The, the, the deer in the headlights yeah. look. 
or when he makes a three and he pumps the fist. And he's fired up. And he's fired yep. up. So the, the, you just see body language, and, and, and it tells you everything you need to know about an athlete. We can see these words and these quotes that yeah, I just yeah. read. These seem super authentic and sincere, which I freaking love, and yeah. I, I desire, and I crave from my sports um, stars that I look up to. But like the, the body language is everything, and he just looks like basketball has become a chore all of a sudden, mm. and basketball has become a job all of a sudden. I think what Steve and maybe his 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 teammates and his bros are trying to get out of him is like, Jay, hey, man, look what we get to do. I know we we. The, the in-game reporter and I sat next to each other on the plane for 10 years in D.C. And he would start to bitch about things that were going wrong. Like the plane's late, the, the food sucks on the plane. And I would look at him and I was like, bro, we have one of 30 jobs in America. <laughs> right. And so our, our saying became one of 30. And we and, and whenever we started to like slip down this this negative town, yeah, we'd be like, "How lucky are we? Yeah, like how lucky are you and I right now that we get to sit here with a microphone FPS and people are actually listening to our dumb asses talk about sports on the radio." The luckiest man on the planet. We're so lucky, it, but it's all perspective. Lou Gehrig's got nothing. But like do you, you, I'm talking too much. I'm gonna let you talk. No, no, I love it. Like when when you've achieved everything, Clay has achieved exactly. four rings. All the money he has. He has generational wealth. Status. He's going to be a Hall of Fame player. Absolutely. Where do these guys go to get that motivation, to get fired up, and to be hungry to win number five? Like, I don't know. I, don't, I can't even comprehend. Where do they go? Where do they dig down to find this? Because you get jaded. You get lost. You got the money. You got the agents. You got the cars. You got everything. And now, all of a sudden, I'm not playing as well as I used to. And da 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 And you have to somehow step back, look at things from a different perspective of a different lens, and just see the joy that you used to just have yeah. for simply going out and winning. Dude, there is nothing that I'll ever do in my life that'll replicate winning. Nothing. Everyone always throws the family thing in there. Screw that. There's nothing that's better than winning. I love winning. It's the most addictive drug on the planet. It's the greatest thing you can ever experience ever. So like, do I get in arguments with like, you on the air and yeah, that's yeah. my competition? Or do I find a different way or an outlet? I still haven't found anything it's, that replicates yeah. winning and going into a locker room and feeling champagne going down the crack of your ass. There's nothing better than that feeling. There's nothing of replicated. But we get so lost along the way, and it seems like, and I could be wrong, that all of a sudden something's clicked for Clay, and he's going, I'm just going to play to win. I'm going to play for the love of the game, because how much longer do I have? And look at all that I've accomplished. Exactly. Well, and I look at people like Carmelo Anthony as cautionary tales. You know, when Carmelo didn't buy in, it shortened his NBA career. It just did, you know? And if you want to continue doing what you're doing... Um, there's a level of of compromise that you need to come to the middle of. You you brought up a bunch of things. Number one, body language. Sam and I had this long conversation with Bonte. Bonte lost his mind on me, but I was like, "Hey, look, I I'm a big body language guy. When I'm teaching kids, like for example, pitching on the mound, do not show up your teammates and the umpire. You're not going to get another good pitch. You know, borderline. If you show up the umpire, like." <gasps> You think he's going to give it to you? No. You know, like there's a whole way of conducting yourself, right? And I'm not saying everybody's got to be Matt Cain at 12 years old, but like there's little <laughs> there's little things, right? And I saw Kyle Shanahan at a podium two days after the Super Bowl, and it was John Lynch in a white collared shirt, and he looked very presidential, and he was fielding answers. He was devastated that they lost, and he's fielding all these questions and everything. And then I looked, and it was Kyle Shanahan, and the hat was really low, and he was sunken down, and it felt like to me he was trying to hide at the podium metaphorically, you know what I'm saying? And and I read a lot into that, and Bonte thought I was absurd. And I was like, look, man, like, when you're at the top position, there's a way that you have to conduct yourself presidentially, even in times of crisis. And that body language was, like, really alarming to me. And I'm not saying you can't be devastated, but you get what I'm saying. You know, like, there's just a way to conduct yourself. And I don't think everyone has to agree, but I'm, I'm with you on the body language. The other part I want to get into with you is – to be a 99 overall, if this were a video game, I don't know if you play video games. No. But let's say your player is... Asteroids. A 95 overall. That's your rating, right? Donkey Kong, the old ones. To go from a 95 like Clay was down to like an 85 is harder, I think, for him than it would be, hey, I'm an 82 overall and I dropped down to like a 76. You know, I'm a, I'm a fifth man on a team and now I've got to be a sixth, seventh, eighth man. I think that's an easier acceptance than being, I am one of the best players in the league and I'm going to go down as one of the top five, six players in franchise history to now I'm a role player. That's a harder drop for someone like him than it would be for maybe a, a, a fringe starter 
Yeah. Am I wrong in that assessment? No, I mean, when you start at a six like I did, and then you go to a negative 12, <laughs> and they tell you you can't play anymore, I could, I could totally relate to that. But you get where I'm going? Dude, it's a it's an ego thing. It's a pride thing. And it, it gets in it gets in my way. It gets in a lot of people's way at times where you just have, you have to check that, man. Yeah. And, and know that you're lucky. You're lucky to be making the money you're making. You're lucky to have had the experiences you've had in life. People are telling me that in my life right now. My my close like knit yeah. group is like, look at what you've accomplished. Like you're all bummed because you're not working, but look at the life you've had. And I think it's hard for us all to step back and be like how fortunate we are. But it seems like not to get too deep. Right? Yeah, it seems like he's seeing that right now. I agree. And if he can wrap his arms around this and be another weapon that gives them so much depth, and if they keep playing like they're playing. This is a long answer to your question. I don't know that they can win another championship or not. I don't think so. But I think they can surprise us all yeah. in, in what happens for the last 30-something games. I agree. And, and there's something interesting. Like, when I watch Steph Curry, not everyone has this. And not everyone's blessed with these things. He, a, I think he has the demeanor to accept the highs and the lows and all that stuff. He has this balance in his life. He's clearly my, maniacally obsessed with basketball, but he has this whole family aspect and all these other outside interests that I think recalibrates him for his sport. And I look at someone like Barry Bonds in his post-retirement career, and he's been struggling, you know? Like, he's talked about it. Like, I, I miss the game, like, tremendously, and he never could strike that right balance. And I... I, I, I'm getting real deep here, but I, I worry about Clay, you know, like post-basketball life. Like, what's He'll be he gonna... fine. He'll be fine, bro. What? He'll be fine. <laughs> Financially, yeah. But like, you know, like we all have like my dad. My dad lived to work, you know, and then he retired. And it was like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Like, and I was worried. You know, like he, he's golfing like crazy and he was doing all this. and that, But he needed to find that right balance, you know. And I think it's different for every single person. Dude, you, it's very you, relatable. You have really good points right now because it, the guys that have – trouble retiring from whatever line of work yeah loved that work the most exactly my ken caminiti was my idol when i played when, yeah. when i played badass third base for he loved the game more Switch than anybody era. i've ever been around he had so much trouble in retirement he got into drugs and he died like they I mean not to but buzz kill yeah. but like the guys that that love whatever they do the most have the most trouble transitioning because there's nothing when you have value to the guy next to you and you have value to the person you work with on your right and your left and you have that camaraderie yeah. and you go out and have beers and you love what you do and then all of a sudden that value's taken away and you're like you've worked your whole life exactly to be a really good radio host. Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden you're done with that and you miss that. There's nothing to replicate that. So th the people like Clay that, that love basketball more than most, and it's not just a job, it's their life. It's just, Those are the guys that have trouble transitioning. Absolutely. Whatever it is. And that's why guys try to stay around broadcasting yep. to, to get that adrenaline 100%. rush and 